Good evening, everyone. My name is Khalid al Sadan. I am your undergraduate teaching assistant for Structural Theory 1, 3230, under the supervision of Professor Badi. I am currently in Tompkins' fourth floor recording this video. Uh, this is video number two, and in this video, I will show you how to create the supports of this beam and the load combinations of this beam. And yes, I did state that in that order. It's best practice if you create the supports first and then you go on and create the load combinations. So let's begin. Let's type in STAD Pro. And as you can see, in my recent files, I have our pr problem that we've been creating in video one. So we click that. And as you can see, we're presented with a 3D view. To fix that, as stated in video one, we click view from the positive z axis. So I click view from the positive z, z axis. Excuse that. Sorry. And now I have it in 2D. However, I don't see my nodes. Well, I can fix that by go by right clicking and going to my labels. I go to my nodes. I see node numbers and node points. I hit apply. And I hit. Well, also I want to see my materials. So I also want to click sections and I hit apply and I hit OK. So I have two of my materials assigned to these beams and my nodes. Also, for if you want to be detailed, you can type your name in the engineer box. So I'll write Khalid A and checker I can write GW. This is for your preference uh, if you guys would like to do that. Let us now create the supports for this beam. What do we have for supports? We have a pin support at node A and a, pin, and a roller support at node C. So to, to, to go to supports, we click on general and then we go to the support tab. As When you click your support tab, you can see that in your support box you have no supports. So you have to create a support. When you hit create, you come up with a box like this. For the time being, you forget about foundation, incline, tension, compression, only strings, enforced, enforced, but monthly linear. Ignore these tabs. The primary tabs we're going to deal with for the rest of the semester is fixed, pinned, and fixed, but. Okay? Now, we don't have a fixed support in our beam. So, for the time being, and in a later video, we'll, we'll try to do a problem where there is a fixed support. But we do have a pinned support. So, we click on the pin tab. And we have this box over here. Now, from, from our earlier engineering classes, we know that a pin support restricts movement in the x direction and in the y direction. So, when we look at our box, it's restrained in the x direction and the y direction. And if you want to get detailed and go into the three-dimensional world, yes, it's also restricted in the z direction but it's not restricted rotationally. So this is a pin support. So I hit Add. When I click Add, I see my pin support in my toolbox. Now I need to create my roller support. So I click on Create. And as you can see here, I don't have a roller option, but there is actually a roller option. I need to create that. So I go to Fixed But. If I click that. And now I have something called a release. What a release means is basically where the support can actually have a freedom of movement. Base, that's basically what it is. A release is a freedom of movement. So when I go to my problem, where can this roller move? It can move in the x direction, but it cannot move in the y direction this roller it can rotate in the x and y in the x and y uh, axis and also the z axis so i have to release those movements i cannot release the y movement because it is restrained in the y movement so let's go to our box here well it says where where can the support move or where can it be released it can be released in the x direction in the z direction in the rotational x axis, rotational y axis, and the rotational z axis. So this way of setting up your tick marks means that you have a roller support. So I click add. 
Now I have two supports in my toolbox and I'm ready to assign. So I click on support two and it highlights itself. And I make sure use cursor to assign is checked. So then I hit the assign bar. When I hit the assign, my cursor changes into a pin support. So I go on node one or node A in the problem and I click. When I click, it automatically assigns to that node. I do the same thing for support three and I click on node three. I have now a roller support in my beam. I have a pin support, a pin support here. I have a roller support. I have a roller support here. Although the icons differ, the, 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 it is still the same intuitively. Okay, so let me minimize this. And yes, you, you will get auto save boxes, which is a good thing. Now, once, so now we've completed the support system of this beam. Let us go to our loads and definitions. Well, what is our load combination on this beam? Well, we have a uniform distributed load and a concentrated load. So let's go click on our load cases details. Let's add. Now, I like to call this one load case one. And this is just good practice on, or I've always done it this way. You can call it anything as long as you know what you're going to put inside it. So I click add and I hit close. Under my load cases details, I have load case one. Now within load case one, I can add my uniform distributed load and my concentrated load. So I click on load case one, it's highlighted, I click add. Once I click add, I have this important box that shows up, okay? For simplicity, let's start with the concentrated load. Now, the concentrated 10 kip load is acting on a node and it is going in the negative y direction, okay? If you look at this small box here, this is the coordinate system of STAD Pro. So anything going upwards is positive. Anything going to the right is going to be positive. Therefore, if you want to reverse that, you going to the left would be negative and going down would be negative. So how do we make a negative 10 kip force? Well, since it's acting on a node, we go to nodal load. We make sure node is highlighted. And I go to my y direction, which is over in this box. At now it's zero kip. Let me highlight that. Let me backspace. I will type in the negative sign, 10 kip. And now I simply add it. And it's, if you look to your load case, it is underneath that. Okay. Now, this is a little, this next part is going to be very tricky, okay? So please pay attention. We have a distributed uniform two kip per foot load. Between A and B, there is a two kip per foot load acting over a seven foot distance. Between B and C, we have a two kip per foot uniform load acting over a three foot distance. Therefore, we have to make two cases of uniform distributed loads with different distances over which they are acting on. So let me show you what, how this would look. So, un, so within these options, we go to member load because, sorry, this distributed load is acting on the members. So when you click on uniform force, you see that you have a helpful schematic of what each of these variables mean. So of course we have a negative two kip load because we're going down. And we have to create two of these, okay? One that's acting over a seven foot distance and the other that's acting over a three foot distance. So I need the distance between D1 and D2 to be seven foot and three foot. So the easiest way to do that is to keep D1 at zero and then D2 at seven foot. So now I have the distance between D1 and D2 to be seven foot and it could only be acting on a member that is seven feet long, which we do have between nodes one and nodes two. 
okay I hit add you can see here I have a uniform distributed load negative 2 kip per foot acting over a 7 foot distance and I can do the same thing over the 3 foot so I just highlight the 7 foot I backspace I hit number 3 and I click add as you can see here I have a 3 kip I have a negative 2 kip per foot load acting over a 3 foot distance I hit close and now I am ready to assign these loads so as with the materials property oh I have another auto save let's just click save real quick I can click on this I can make sure use cursor to assign is selected I hit assign and I assign it to node number two or node number B sorry node letter B I do the same for the seven for the negative two kip uniform force per, per foot load I add it on here and I do the same for the other load so you see that this distributed load can only act all over a seven foot distance that's why the no you have to create this node if I were to create a uniform two kip per foot load over a 10 foot distance STAD Pro will have a difficult time and will alert you with a warning therefore it's best if you do it in parts okay so let's hit the close so when I hit close everything disappears however if you want to see your loads you go to this button over here which says loads you click that and everything is showed up now I don't like the color green because with a green the green against a white background is is not that aesthetically pleasing to me so I go to my labels I right click and go to my labels I go to my loads and results it will tell you force results not available that's okay I want to change my loads color to green let's put red I like red hit OK, hit Apply, I hit Close. Okay. Now I want to show my, my force results. And also I want to take care of this arrow here, this negative 10 kip, per, ne negative 10 kip load. I want, to make it, I want to make it smaller on the screen. So I go right click again, I go to Labels, I go to Scales. I hit Apply immediately and I go to my point force. I go up, sorry, I go, sorry, I go up right I go up I press the up button and as you can see as I press up the arrow itself shortens if I go down it, it increases so I like to keep it like this where I can see all my loads okay I hit apply and then I hit close now I want to see my force results sorry my, my force values I right click again I go to labels I go to my uh, my force box my sorry my loading display options I hit load values I hit apply I hit okay now this is okay I do indeed have a ne negative 10 kip load in the right dimensions but if you look at your distributed load it's in pound pound force per foot I don't like that I want to change that I go to my change graphical display unit I click that I go to my force units I go to my distributed force as you can see it's in pound force per foot I go to my uh, let's see I want it in kips per foot Ah, yes that's better I hit apply I hit OK and I have my loads in the correct dimensions and I have my supports created this concludes video 2 to recapitulate we created our support system and we also created our loading combination. Thank you very much and good luck.